Hello. This is kind of a little surprise YouTube live event. I thought I would check in with you on this beautiful spring day uh, here in the American South. Uh, I'm sure enjoying it. It's about 80 degrees. It's uh, There's a light breeze. Uh, Ranger is barking at waves, which he lives to do. Uh, it seems to be uh, his way of getting out, working out his aggression. So he runs back and forth along the dock here and then jumps in the water so that uh, he can attack the waves because he deems the waves to be something that needs to be attacked. <laughs> anyway, here we are on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Let's see who joins me. Here. This wasn't announced. I didn't post it on Twitter. I didn't send out notifications on YouTube. So it could very well be that absolutely no one joins me here for this YouTube live event. But who's, let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, who ends up joining me here? So here we have uh, Mary Michelle is joining us. Ranger gives his greetings. Yes, he is, he is here pacing around. Just enjoying himself on this beautiful day. And, uh... <laughs> People out for a ride in their boat, enjoying themselves. Good afternoon uh, to you all. Let's see, so we've got someone here from Georgia. I need to get into the shade here just a bit so that I can actually read these comments. Um, yeah, let's get this posse roaring. I agree with that. We need we need more people joining the posse. Let's get this thing, let's really get this thing going. We have big plans for the posse. Let's see, we have someone joining here from the UK, from Germany. Glad to have someone joining from the UK. Another one from the UK, a name like Crazy Horse says Stan, Stanton, North Carolina. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show you what this guy does here, by the way, what he loves to do. This is my buddy here. He is enjoying making the lake very muddy, attacking the waves. Come on, bud. Come on, you go get him. You go get him. Come on, come on. We're not going anywhere. Come on, come on, come on. You go get him. <laughs> Man just lives for that. Southern Oregon here, Birmingham, Alabama, Highlands, Appalachia. The posse is gradually rolling in. Let's see. Malawi, UK. So we have um, Africans, Europeans. You know, you can't help but notice when you're Britain. Britain is technically part of Europe, but... The Brits themselves do not refer to themselves in that way. When they refer to Europe, they're talking about the continent. They don't mean Britain. They don't include it in that. More from the UK here. Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, Mobile, Mobile is a very old historic and, I mean, by U.S. standards, very old historic and uh, a pretty interesting city. Has a pretty good Mardi Gras all of its own. Someone here who says they like border collies. My son has a border collie. I find that dog, their temperament's just a little too intense. Uh, I mean, Ranger's pretty intense, but what I mean by that is um, they're, they just never seem to relax and they, uh, they're very needy. Uh, at least his is. His dog is good heavens. That dog seems like it needs to be laying in a couch in a, you know, in a uh, psychiatrist's office getting counseling, but very, very smart dogs. Yeah, Tornado Alley, uh, someone here from uh, Ohio, Zimbabwe. Glad to have folks from Zimbabwe joining us. Herding breeds, yeah, it's hard not to like the herding breeds. Ranger is, of course, I mean, by, by definition, he's herding breed. He is a German shepherd. He's never been in Germany. I dare say if someone speaks to him in German, he would have no idea what they're saying. You know, dogs do understand in some sense a language, you know, when you think about it. Um, we, uh, 
we have a guest from South America that when she speaks uh, Spanish to him, he just cocks his head like, what in the world is that? Our daughter, Sasha, when we had first adopted her, she would speak to our previous German shepherd, um, Blitz, in Russian, and he would just turn his head and look at her like she was nuts. It's pretty funny. Bella from Florida is joining us. Uh, let's see. Hunting and tracking dogs. Fort Benning. Yeah, I definitely won't call it that because uh, I was born there. I was born at Fort Benning, Georgia. Lived there twice. Um, I'm not far from Benning. I'm just a couple of hours um, away from Fort Benning. And uh, I was born at Martin Field Hospital there. Um, my father was, uh, was stationed there on two separate occasions. He was an airborne ranger. And that is where the ranger school is, uh, the original one. And then now um, it was originally called the Ranger Training Command. And now I think it's just called Ranger School. It's also where the Ranger Hall of Fame is. Um, anyway, more and more people coming in here. Let's see. We have Washington State coming in. Who else? Where else? Gosh, when I'm out here in the sun, I just can't read this thing. Let me see if I can turn up my brightness. Ah, it's all the way up. So I need to get into the shade where I can actually read your comments from Tennessee, a Tennessee vol volunteer here. Someone says, Larry, you get around. We got a Scott here. Yes, I do. I get around quite a lot. Been in Scotland actually many times. Did a major event at the Edinburgh International Festival in 2008, which was really cool. Uh, I've enjoyed going to the military tattoo uh, at Edinburgh Castle. Um, on my mother's side, her, her father, they were all Scots, and uh, pretty serious about it. My grandfather, when he died, had the bag, bagpipes played. See someone here who's come from Canada. My mother was a Canadian, so her Scottish, her Scottish father came to Canada his family had immigrated to Canada. Now watch this guy. Watch what he loves doing here. Come on, you crazy dog. What you doing? There you are. You get him. Go get him. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, Ranger, Ranger isn't a great... He's, He's not a great barker as a rule, but something about waves just sets him off. And so he does bark. Settle down, bud. Hey, Ranger, chill. Chill, bud. Chill. Relax. There are no Democrats out here. War from, uh, from Tennessee. Judy asks, what's he after? He's after the waves. The boats go by and their wakes come in, and he just loves attacking the waves. It's just a... It's just a, like an imaginary game that he plays. It's lots of fun with him. So, do you think there's going to be World War III? Is that what we're headed towards? Diane from Pennsylvania. Yeah, Ranger loves the, the water, that's for sure. Someone here says, probably headed towards World War III starting to look that way. This administration, the Biden administration, um, you know, we wouldn't be having this with Trump. We wouldn't be having this with George Bush. Uh, we wouldn't be having this with Clinton. My point isn't that I like Clinton. Um, it is rather that um, they would have governed with more sense uh, than does the Biden administration, which of course is really just the Obama administration. And um, they have... They have handled both domestic and foreign policy foolishly, aggressively, hatefully, and they're going to find a way to say this is somehow Trump's fault. <laughs> you know, never mind the fact that uh, that that Obama Obama literally sent six hundred billion dollars in cash on pallets uh, to the. Um, to the Iranians, 
Uh, excuse me, he sent uh, $6 billion, I think I just said $600 billion, $6 billion to the Iranians in cash, in cash, on pallets, loaded it up and sent it over. And uh, considered it, has, has crowed that, that Iran was one of his great, um, oh, foreign, uh, what should I say, foreign policy victories. And of course, it's nothing um, of the sort. And now the Biden administration is watching Iran lobbing missiles over into Israel and yet telling Netanyahu that he can't defend himself, that he can't strike back. He better not. He said, you'll strike back, you'll, we'll, uh, we'll no longer support you. So you have the Biden administration that is supporting both sides of this. It's absolutely incredible. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, we have uh, many tre treasonous elements within our government, without a doubt. Uh, Bella Cruz here says, I think Iran is extending its feelers a little bit more to gauge response before further escalation. I agree with that. I, uh, I think they're going to do as much as they can possibly get away with. Um, you know, I don't agree that Trump is our only chance. And, um, and that's just because, and it's not, I'm not saying you, you mean this, Diane, when you say this, but I, I occasionally get a little uncomfortable with some conservatives and um, how they speak of Trump. My hope is in Jesus Christ. It isn't in Trump. Uh, listen, my favorite president in my lifetime is Ronald Reagan. But even as a kid, and I was a kid, I was thinking, I think I was 12 or 13 when he became president of the United States. I, even then, I wouldn't have said that he was my only hope. Um, you know, Trump is certainly a much better alternative um, to any Democrat you care to name, but I don't believe that he is my only hope. You know, it's interesting. Somebody here refers to the Archangel Michael. I, I heard reference to him, second reference to him today. Uh, I heard a reference to him in uh, the sermon this morning in church. Let's see. You know, uh, Reagan is an interesting guy, uh, uh, was rather. Um, Margaret Tutwiler, who was my pleasure uh, to get to know a little bit, who worked for him, and she worked for, oh, five or six other presidents. Um, she told great stories about him, but one of the things that she said that I thought was so interesting, I mean, because this was a president that she knew, she said, you know, when you'd see all those images of him, of him chopping wood or, um, out horseback riding, wearing a cowboy hat. She said, those weren't photo ops. She said, that was him. She said, I mean, that was really and truly who he was. And um, she said he was the most secure man, I'm quoting her, the most secure man she has ever met. She said, every other president she worked for, she says, they're the kind of people that have to be surrounded by syncophants um, all the time. Um, they struggle with being alone. She said Reagan was never that kind of guy. She said he was very contented to be by himself, and um, he didn't need to be surrounded by a bunch of people, a bunch of lackeys telling him how wonderful he was all the time. That, I, I think, is really, really interesting. Uh, someone here says only God will save us. Um, yeah, but that's true in any circumstance, right? I mean, that's that's not just true in America in 2024. Uh, that's true in America in 1980, America in 1945. It's true in America in 1776 and 1800. Meaning um, it is our tendency to forget God when things are going very well. It's human nature when things are going really well. And then um, to remember him all of a sudden as our salvation when things are going badly. The fact of the matter is, um, he's our salvation in, in any given circumstance. It's just that we may not acknowledge him or we may not give thanks to him as we, as we ought. 
Um, but we should look to Jesus Christ. And again, I've said this in a podcast, I've said this in other things, that what we're seeing right now um, is Romans chapter 1 playing out in real time, uh, specifically verses 18 through 32. And it, uh, those verses tell us uh, it's a blueprint print for any society that goes off the rails, what it looks like. And, um, and he says that it begins with thanklessness, although they knew God, they did not acknowledge him as God or give him thanks, uh, is what that passage tells us. And then it goes on to say three times, <laughs> three times, God gave them up, God gave them up, God gave them up three times. There's a series of giving up, like, like cataracts in a waterfall. You go down one waterfall, a second waterfall, and then a third waterfall that's the ultimate of um, of giving up of letting go and um but i'm fascinated by the fact i'm absolutely fascinated by the fact that it begins with thanklessness and uh and i think that's so incredibly important that we understand that and that we acknowledge it because it's very easy for us to become thankless become thankless. Are there things in your life that you can be thankful for? And it's something that I would really strongly encourage you to do is take stock of your life and, uh, and give thanks. What are things that right now, even if you're in physical pain or you're in a hospital somewhere or you've suffered loss of a loved one, or you're fearful of what is gonna happen um, in the world or in America, <laughs> He's got some waves right now to be going after. Hey, bud, Ranger, chill, man. Shh, shh, shh. Settle down. So what are some things that you can be thankful for right now? Um, I would urge you to make a list of those things and uh, to, to, to take some time to give thanks um, to... Uh, Jesus for those things, whatever they are, give thanks to them. Is it your family? Uh, is it your home? Uh, is it your health? Um, is it a, you know, a good glass of water? Is it friendship? Uh, is it a beautiful day like today? Are there things that you can give thanks for? He's got all these waves coming in right now and it has got him pretty excited. Ranger, Ranger, Ranger. Hey, chill, chill, chill. Come here. Chill, 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 bud, chill, chill. So that's what I'd urge you to do. And then on Tuesday, uh, I'll close just by telling you this. On Tuesday, we have a really cool podcast coming out. It is a discussion that I did um, with British actor Lawrence Fox. I just, I just posted on, um, on Twitter, on X, a clip with him. It's about a three-minute clip from that episode gives you a little bit of a sneak peek of what that discussion is. If you don't know who he is, um, you ought to. Um, he's the son of famed British actor James Fox. Uh, he is the nephew of famed British actor um, uh, Edward Fox. You know, if you've seen Day of the Jackal, you know, in movies like that, he was in Inspector Lewis, uh, Mel Gibson's The Professor and the Madman, numerous other films um, that you could enjoy, Gosford Park. Uh, but he's a guy that's being relentlessly attacked by the left. I mean, relentlessly attacked, relentlessly attacked by, relentlessly attacked by the left. And um, you, um, you want to make sure that you, uh, you see that podcast when it, uh, when it drops on Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. So I look forward to seeing all of you then. Uh, hearing from you, reading your comments, 8 a.m. Tuesday morning, Central Time. I'm gonna run right now. I got a lot of work I gotta do and prep for an interview that I'm doing on Monday, Tuesday. Got a lot coming up this week. So I hope you're doing well. You guys take care. Bye-bye.